B-Side Word. Hey, and welcome to the B-Side Word. We're a group of friends from around the world. We share our thoughts on second page news. I'm Evan. <laughs> Hi, Evan. You're you? Evan. Hello, Evan. <laughs> Good to meet you, Evan. Hi, <laughs> Evan. <laughs> Ernest. I never knew he married Evan, dude. <laughs> Evan. Sorry, because I was reading this and it says I'm Devin, Devin but Evan. I must have gone Evan because I'm like, I'm not Devin. Anyway, let me do that again. You Sorry. Just have to say, you know, you just have to say, I'm Emma. I'm Emma. I'm here with Dev. Hello. CJ. Hello. Maxi. Hello. And Alexander. Hey. And Evan. And let's just jump into it. DeFranco style. Now, we're going to start with um, <laughs> my article, which is... <laughs> who's DeFranco? Who's Philip DeFranco. Philip DeFranco. Who's Philip DeFranco? Only like a Welcome, you YouTube beautiful star. bastards. <laughs> Welcome, you beautiful bastards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how is that meant to mean something to me? You have to YouTube him after. He does all the news every day. Well, five days a week. He does like all the news. Yeah. Um, okay, so my article is about an old lady who is 104 years old. Her name's Anne. And she's from Bristol in England. Now, this charity work with the elderly and they approached the, um, the, the old person's home, the nursing home, and said, can you guys write down the um, elderly people's wishes? So this lady, Anne, her wish was that she wanted to be arrested because she'd always been a lawful, um, a law abiding citizen. And it was just like her not her dying wish. It's just like her, her wish to like get handcuffed and be arrested. So they arranged it to happen. And the local police rocked up at the nursing home, handcuffed her, put her in a car, sirens blaring. And she was the happiest lady ever. <laughs> How sweet <laughs> is that? This, um, this wish took place on the international day of happiness, which is March the 20th, every single year. Um, Didn't know so that. that made me think, about happiness and I had a look at the world's happiest countries. So there is an actual ranking of happiness and it's um <laughs> there ranking is ranking of happiness. Yeah, there's a world happiness report that gets put out. So according to the 2016 to 2018 report, what do you reckon? This is this is a question for um Maxi and Alexander because CJ and Dev can actually see. Uh, what I'm looking at, but what who, what countries do you think are in the top, let's say, five? I'm talking about happiness. Yes. Happiest countries in the world. Norway. Yes. Sweden. Denmark. Sweden. Yes. Yep. Wait, was that to Denmark? Yeah. Both Norway and Denmark. One? What'd you say, Alexander? Sweden. No. Not in the top five. Top 10. Iceland. Who? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So we've got three so far. Yes. Yes. Um, Wait, did we, we said uh, Netherlands. Yes. yes. And one, one, more. one more. Which is number one. Happy. What? None of Which those number are number one, one, one though. Finland. That's yes. it. Yes. <laughs> wow. Guys. All, all Scandinavian countries. <laughs> so you just listed Scandinavia. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah that was, <laughs> was, was this research done in I a Scandinavian so country? I am so impressed. <laughs> no. That's actually very impressive, guys. Um, but, the, but isn't like Scandinavia also has the highest suicide rates as well? Mm, I thought that was... But that's, uh, isn't that because South, of uh, SAD, seasonal affective disorder? Yeah, no, the suicide you know I mean? rates is more Japan and South Korea, no? Let's it may be as well, but I, I, one of the highest suicide rates in Scandinavia, especially Finland. Let's, oh, wow. let's Google it. How can you be the happiest place with the most suicides? That's interesting. That's what I'm saying. About, like, it's, it's, it's a life, the lifestyle is good, which is why they're happy. But then the, the suicide rates, if, if I'm right, the reason Scandinavia is because they're linked to sad seasonal affective disorder, which you can't really negate. Like the the seasons happen if you're in a situation where you don't see sunlight for a long time. That's why you get very minimal. Isn't that why IKEA is so you. bright? Like they've got all bright. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Isn't that uh, really? isn't the furniture all bright because of that? They're trying to negate that. What's with you and IKEA? Oh, I'm I serious. Have no idea. We that always so go to IKEA. I'm not kidding. I've heard something that IKEA is bright just because like it's so dull outside. They make the furniture bright so it's bright inside. 
I love yeah. that. Um, there you go. You learn like, something new every day. You've got IQ on your mind, don't you, mate? We love IQ. He's at the forefront. He's yeah. at the forefront of my head. Right here? Yeah. Ikea. Ikea. <laughs> what, what are we doing tomorrow? Me guess. We're going to Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you enjoy trips to Ikea, Dev? Love it. Yeah. Love really? it. Yep. Yeah. I don't, don't want to work Every there. time I go to Ikea, I come back with so much stuff I didn't know I wanted. No, no, no. Less money so in see, my bank account. See, what he does is this, right? We'll try out chairs for about 15 minutes, and then we'll buy none of them. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was this, uh, this light. We looked at it for about 30 minutes. He was like, Sage, this light is awesome. I'm like, you're buying it? He's like, no. <laughs> like, why are we looking so at it for? Does it mean not? Because it's it like can move around. Look, Ikea, right like, I can see it 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Have you heard of the people that did a, um, they did like a full TV series only using, and their set was Ikea. Yeah. Who's that? Oh, you what? told me about no, that. Maxi did. Oh, did you say? Oh, Maxi oh, told, I told you in the past. Oh. I still haven't watched it, but there's uh, people who used to go to Ikea and if they want to film a kitchen scene, they'll go to a kitchen and then they'll yes. just film a scene. And it was like improv, right? So people, somebody else walks <laughs> in, they just have to pretend they're part of the cast. Like, oh, hey, <laughs> <laughs> or just ignore them. Or... <laughs> that seems fun. That that's something I'd like to so do. That's funny. Uh... But didn't they no, get No, we're not out? doing it tomorrow at Ikea. You sure? Yeah. You sure? Oh, it sounds like a B-side spinoff. <laughs> yeah. It's like somebody's featuring me, uh, me and Dev. <laughs> they got to kicked out though after. I'm surprised we're not buy would... anything from IKEA. I've never, I've never bought anything from IKEA. What is the first thing you would recommend I buy from there? A Kallax. I reckon the trolley. The trolley was cool. Oh, what? Cin the cinnamon rolls. Be so you see the trolley behind cinnamon Emma and rolls. Ernest? That, tro that trolley was cool. Yeah, I like that trolley. Yeah. And the little cup things because we had been walking around for twenty minutes looking for those bloody things. That's a hack. <laughs> is is there any piece of IKEA furniture that you would? Definitely recommend staying away from. Staying away from? No, it's amazing. Nah. Everything's good. Yeah. I've never had like a bad piece of furniture from nah. Ikea. Because these stools are from Ikea. Calyx. A Calyx is a staple. Staple? The what? Staple? Calyx. Yeah, the Calyx um, like, bookshelves. Like the thing. Oh, bookshelf. Huh? What's a Calyx bookshelf? Like that. Behind that us. No, no, it's not a Calyx. You know, the cal everyone's got them. Like, they've got the, it comes in a four square. Like oh, the, the cubes, four square, the cubes. Oh, or yeah. an eight. Googled it. It's like a cubby. Does, does that care show cubby. the shoe storage? Yeah, they have yeah. shoe yeah. storage, everything. I might get that. Hmm. But, yeah. it's I get glasses um, from there. Max. Dev yeah. just dropping in his IKEA knowledge like everyone oh. knows it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah like Kallax, you know? <laughs> he even knows where this, um, the cheap stuff is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the discounts, oh. discount items. So what uh, happened yeah. to this lady? What, can you tell us about her experience? They took her to Ikea. She was just overjoyed. She, this, it made her day. She said, she, uh, she, she said something like, I wouldn't have, uh, I'm so glad I didn't, I didn't miss this. Like, I'm so glad I got to see this in my life. Or got to experience getting arrested. And then chucked in the paddy wagon and taken to the... Did she go through the whole thing? Like, did she get fingerprinted she, and all that kind no, of... No, I don't think so. She just got taken in the car and they said, do you want to put the sirens on? And she said, oh, yes, please. <laughs> 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 and they put the sirens on. Classic old person voice. <laughs> <laughs> So my article is about a person drying her underwear <laughs> using the vents on the aeroplane. <laughs> Why is that underwear wet for? Uh, <laughs> so she's, Are we talking like the vents above your yes. seat? Yes. So she's got her underwear up, <laughs> her polka dot undies, and she's, <laughs> she's drying them. She's sexy Ooh, and she's what drying. Of, what kind of dad? <laughs> White, white with red polka dots. Uh, white, yeah. Red, yellow, and blue polka dots. <laughs> okay. Really? What was the background color? What was the base color? White. Oh. Okay. And she had pink yeah. frills. I think I, I'm making this up. Yeah, he's making it. Up. <laughs> but to my it's, memory, it's white with a black outline. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't know why her niggas are wet for. <laughs> Guys, did she, did she pee herself on the I, plane? I read this article, and to be honest, to be a Debbie Downer, I think it was a kid's undies. Oh. <laughs> Was it? Well, of... you cut the it, Fr that's what... <laughs> frilly kids undies. Why are you? Why are you showing us? 
No, I'm looking. I'm watching the video. They are. They do look like kids' undies. I yeah. think one of her kids probably had an accident, or she's washing them and she's just drying them. But she holds them up there for a good twenty minutes and gives the rest of the passengers a good laugh. But she doesn't seem phased either. She's just like, oh, drying, drying. You know, as a parent, <laughs> you lose. Um, what do you, you, you lose? You don't get embarrassed very easily when you're a parent. Easily, no. You you sort of you just do stuff like if your kid has to pee. You're pulling over and they're peeing. Like, aim for the tree. Aim for the bottom of the tree. Aim for the tire. You don't care. Dude, I, I pee like that now. I've got a question for you then. If you, is there anything that you've done in public where you know what you're doing and you know why you're doing it, but you know that everyone else around you is looking at you like, what is this guy doing? Yes. I, I've peed. <laughs> I purposely did it as an experiment. Oh, I Go remember on. this. Tell us this story, Maxie. But if it, if it, has it been published before? We've heard this story. No, I don't think so. Okay, so I uh, I read in the book called the Four Hour Work Week. You're aware of this, Alex, right? Tim Ferriss. Yep. The Four Hour Work Week is a book anyway. And it's talking about lots of stuff. But part of it is about how to overcome like the fear of people's opinions of you. Mm -hmm. um, and he so, he sort of says it's like a muscle. You train it, and you get used to people thinking weirdly of you, and then you realize. Uh, it doesn't matter. And one of them was a really, which I found really hard to do, which I haven't actually done, was go into a coffee shop and when somebody gives you uh, the price, say, oh, can I have it for, say if it's three pounds, say, oh, can I have it for two pounds 50? And you know they're going to be like, oh, I can't do that. But it doesn't matter. That's, that's the only consequence. But everyone in the queue is like, what is this guy doing? <laughs> um, so the idea is you just do lots of things like that to get used to it. And so the one that I did was go to a busy place and just lay down on the floor. Yeah. So I... But I went into London on Waterloo Bridge. So there's like, I don't know, hundreds of people walking back and forth. And I just, I stand there for maybe five or 10 minutes. I'm like, am I really going to do this? Like, am I just going to lay down? <laughs> and my heart was like racing. And I'm thinking, all I have to do is lay down on the floor. Like, why am I so scared? Like, this is, that's why I'm looking out over the bridge into like, over the River Thames. I'm looking at the water thinking, okay, just think water's flowing, nice and peaceful. I get my phone out and then I do a Snapchat. Because I was like, at least if I show my friends, I get something out of this, right? So then I start recording myself and then I just sit down on the floor, lay down and maybe four, five, six people walk past me. Then this woman's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. And then she's like, okay. And then she carries on walking. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just laying there like, oh, okay, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And I stay there until I, stay there until I feel comfortable. So I'm just like maybe 10 seconds in. I'm like, oh, this isn't too bad anymore. Like I'm just laying on the floor. No one cares. And then I get back up and then that was it. That was my experiment. I was like, okay, that was something weird to do in public. The, the way that you described it, it doesn't seem like a big deal, right? But then I put myself mm. in your shoes in that like lying down and I'm like, I'll be sweating. I'll be stiff as a board. I would be like yeah. freaking the hell out. That'd be just over the top. I just, yeah. It's, it's so weird. Like when I thought of doing it in my head as well, I was like, I'm just going to go step on the bridge and lay down. Like that, I, that is what I'm going to do. The yeah. actions I'm going to take, there's nothing that can stop me. There's nothing wrong with that. Then I stand yeah. on the bridge. I kind of do a half squat and I'm like, oh, nope. <laughs> that, that didn't feel right. Did, did, did I lay down in a weird way? Would a normal person lay down like this? Maybe they're going to think, why is he laying down like that? <laughs> like, what? All these dumb things come to my head like, but what if one of my colleagues walk past? What am I going to do? I'm like, they're not going to walk past. Like, it's just all these dumb things come to my head like why I shouldn't do it. And then, do you know what? Just, I, what you just said that last bit is I was thinking when you're telling this I'm like you know what I'm moving to London in a couple of weeks I'm going to try that exact same thing in that exact same place just to see how it goes <laughs> and the yes. first thought that came to my the first thought that came to my mind was what if my new colleagues find out like what are the chances that they find yeah. out but at the same it's time so dumb. and if they do find out <laughs> you just say oh I'm doing this experiment as part of this job where I can you be more confident like, and they're like oh okay End of story. Yeah, They'll mean, probably lie down I next think, year. Be like, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> I, go. I, th I think um, the the thing that is closest to that for me and experience and Dev to be able to speak on this is being a YouTuber. Mm. Because mm. The, the, the benefit of the YouTuber there is you, at least you do have a camera that you're talking into. But sometimes... <laughs> that doesn't make a difference. Sometimes you set it up... Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you set it up at a distance and then you go and do something for the camera... And you know that people haven't seen the camera or whatever. And they're just like, what is going on? And like, yeah. you, it's that same sort of reaction that you have to go through. 
Um, I yeah. think the weirdest one for me was definitely when I went to London for the first time when I was vlogging. And like, I'm in the tube with this big camera rig that I'm holding and talking into it. And I just, you can feel the eyes just like burning into mm. your skin. Just like, <laughs> what, what the, are all these people The thinking? thing is in London, stuff like that happens all the time. Like, Lon I actually feel like London's an easy place to do that stuff. Cause you always see other people being weird as well. Do you know what I mean? I've yet to see other vloggers in general, like ever. I've never been out and seen like a vlogger. Really? Walking. What's I've, vloggers? Which I, <laughs> CJ's, to me, bearing in mind how CJ's, big YouTube is. CJ's looking at me weird, Alexander. What's vloggers? What's vloggers? Do you know what a vlog is? A video log. Have you ever seen video those vlog. people that talk in is front it? of the cameras? Yeah. yeah I don't know. What does vlog sound like? like, oh, I did this today, I did this yeah, today, yeah, I did yeah. this. Oh, okay. I thought what vlog, vlog was a combination of video and blog. Like it's a video blog. Yeah. Blog. Yep. I thought video log, it made sense to me. <laughs> but what's, what does blog mean? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I knew that one was coming. Ah, <laughs> it's web log. It's a truncation of web log. Mm. Ah, so video web log. So it should be called vlog. <laughs> v web log. <laughs> Go on, going back to what the article I? where this girl was drying her un or her child's oh, yeah. underwear, mm, I yeah. have heard at hotels, air hostess wash their uh, undies in kettles. So they fill the kettle up and they put the underwear in and then they boil it so that it cleans their undies. No. No. I heard that's a hack Don't that they tell use. Don't me that. I'm talking about in the kettles that you use... Like the the kettles for the people who are staying there. Yeah. Yes. I, imagine you, like they don't. Okay. Come imagine on. you're the person afterwards that goes to the hotel room and goes to make a cup of tea, and you just say some. You know what? I I, <laughs> I feel like talking about the things that happens in hotels when you're not paying attention is a dangerous conversation. <laughs> like, it, there's a lot of things I feel we don't want to know. <laughs> I think hotels in general are like. I, I think everyone knows what happens there. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Like I like hotels, but then I think about it, it's dirty. I prefer my own it's bed. The more, yeah, the more you think about it, the grosser hotels are. <laughs> <They're> gross. <laughs> I don't know. I just yeah. Man, do you, like, do you I, think? I, oh. Go on, Max. I was. Gonna, I'd say I spend a lot of time in hotels, and it's just when this subject comes up, which it sometimes does. It. it I'm. Oh, it does. It's not. <laughs> it's fun. one you want to avoid, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like just, I'm, I like ig this is a perfect thing where ignorance is really bliss. Yes, like, it is bliss. Yes. <laughs> one minute warning. You know? Yes. You know yeah, how it's well, one thing I do do, and I, I do do, I do do. One thing I do do in a hotel room <laughs> is a do do. <laughs> is I remove the pillows. You have like the pillows you sleep on, but they have those decorative pillows. Yeah. Like, yeah. I heard they never, get, they like never get washed like ever. So anything that happens to those. It stays on them forever. So I, the first thing I do is I pick those up by the corner and I flick, flick them into the corner of the room, give the a pillow a bit of a rub, and then I lay down and as if I got rid of all the gunk from it for my little pillow. Up. That's enough. I think I think I want to um one day rent a room out, not to stay in, but just rent a room out and then just go in there with um blue lights. Was it the UV lights? Yeah. Just 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 to see. All right. To see if it's like real. It's <laughs> real. It's real. <laughs> I don't want to know what it's I've been sleeping in. It's real. You look at the ceiling, you go, how did he do that? That's incredible. Um, <laughs> so, you're, you're almost impressed, right? Before yeah, you're disgusted. Yeah, like, like, what? Damn. <laughs> <laughs>I hacked my body for a future that never came. And this is a story of a woman who, along with a few other colleagues, inserted a magnet into their uh, ring finger. And the idea of this is they could then, like, the idea was that all humans would have this eventually. And then things like bottle openers, you would just have to touch it with your finger and the magnet would then slide a mechanism and the bottle would open. For example, you could pick up screws if you're, uh, I don't know, an engineer or if you're, an electrician, you can put your finger like next to the wall and you'll know if there's a current going through it. Like you can feel the current. What? The, it's a very specific future they envisioned. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just one. Okay. 
Yeah, keep going, Max. You know what came to mind? You know when you get two opposite poles? I mean, two of the same pole? And it just and don't work anywhere. You can't imagine your partner. You're like, let's it, hold hands. It repels. No. 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 <laughs> Come closer. Come closer. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Do, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Does Maxi have more information? I do. Uh, I don't know. Emma says there's more, it. so. Okay, I do. So <laughs> in this particular instance, um, okay, so the world of biohacking, you know, we, we're getting used to hearing this yeah. tech, you know, terminology yeah. uh, of this technology, right? The magnet one is actually fairly old. When I say old, it's sort of, around the 2010s, around that sort of thing, right? So it was very popular a decade ago. Now it's kind of waning out a bit. The reason for that is because magnets weaken over time. They're not permanent. So in the case of this lady that got the magnet um, implanted in her right ring finger, uh, it lasted four years. And then it started to weaken until she until it just no longer works anymore. Now she's stuck with a magnet. <laughs> now the guy, Might that, be a magnet. Piece this, of metal in her finger. well metal, and this causes issues. So the guy that told her to get it and the one that implanted her, um, he was refused an MRI when he needed one because he had this magnet. So he had to get his removed. Yeah. It leaves scar tissue. If you want to get it again, you can't get it in the same place. So you're gonna have to get it in another finger. Right? Isn't it also also poisonous to your body? Um, not these magnets. I don't believe. How about metal poisoning? What's, yeah. Well, you're, I guess there's I'm a chance. I'm assuming they put it in like a bag to stop it leaking into your blood. Yeah, but still. In the same way when you put breast <laughs> implants. Silicone? <laughs> I'm not sure. I haven't, got, I haven't got breast put in. So Mine those natural. magnet ones are sort of like, <laughs> oh, yeah, been done there, been that, been there, done that type thing, right? <laughs> done there, been that. Anyway. Done there, been that. There's, <laughs> there's new type ones coming out. So, for example, um, there's this uh, company called Cyborg Nest. They make these um, compasses. It's called North Sense Compass. And what it is, it's a removable sensor. What are you shaking your head at, Alexander? Company called Cyborg Nest. Is all, no, Cyborg Nest. Uh, it's not Cyborg like Nest. Cyborg Cyborg Nest. <laughs> Cyborg, as in a human android, Cyborg. Yes, Nest. Yep. Yeah, if they, uh, I'm just saying a company called that is already a red flag. Red flag. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, they make a compass. So it's, a North, it's called North Sense, and it's a removable sensor which you anchor to your skin, and it vibrates through the piercings, through the anchorings, when you turn due north. What the hell would you need that for? Why? <laughs> Right? I don't know. But so you know where North is, Dev? <laughs> Maybe right. you're a you're voyager. <laughs> Just for curiosity, does everyone have a, a touchscreen phone? There's a compass on our phones, right? Everyone yeah. knows that. There is. So I, I, can, I can easily find North by just pressing the app. You have him on and the top of your, your boat, at the front of your boat. <laughs> when's, it, when's it vibrating? <laughs> Where's the vibrating? <laughs> Steve-o, let me know when you vibrate. Guys, maybe you're does going it, camping it, if, and if you're... If you're facing north, does it constantly vibrate if you, if you find the right spot? <laughs> you just find the sweet <laughs> spot <laughs> and it's like, this is amazing. <laughs> you're, you're going well. <laughs> maybe you're camping, your battery is not going to last in your phone and you need to get your way out. And wherever you're going is like, just happens to be north. Okay. <laughs> what the... Are you, Emma, are you trying to find a situation where this is actually useful? Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you can actually buy something called a compass and it's in, the, an in america it's useful right they do it. things like north east west south i don't street. know but um what was that maxi yeah you just you just you just in america look at the they're street like a, sign nah no no, no no what if uh it's a foggy day what if it's a very foggy day <laughs> the, the bio it's a very foggy day and someone says head two blocks north you just you just find the <laughs> and then you, you head two blocks the guy, the guy next to you goes, what are you, what are you doing? Nothing, nothing, <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> but I think it's this way. <laughs> I just have a feeling. <laughs> Why is your chest flinching? Um. Anyway, so the biohack, there is a biohack that this bloke, because uh, we have this uh, train pass called an Opal Pass in Australia. And this guy yeah. inserted the Opal um, card, not the card, the actual chip, chip, yeah. into his skin. Yep. And every time, every time he'd go on the um, the train, he just 
um, tap yeah. on, tap on, and then tap off. But they told him to remove mm. it. They why? told him to. I don't know why. I, I didn't. In Sweden, they have that. In Sweden, you can work in an office that offers you um, NFC chips. I think they're called instead of a key card to get in and out of buildings. See, I and stuff personally like that. want the chip on me. Or you can pay for your train ticket with one. That's a good way to monitor where people are. What What do you mean? And it, it, but like, do they use the chips to go in? To get in, it's, it's instead of your key card, you ha- you have that in your, ha- in they, your hand. You don't have to. They offer it if you want one. Okay. I don't think it's all companies. We... I think it's some. Oh gosh, sorry, just knocked everything. Are we heading towards like a a, a fully biohacked future? Yes. There's one biohacker, <laughs> and he's um called Josiah um, Zayna. I don't know if you guys have heard of him, but you probably have heard of what he did. He's a social activist and he was on stage and he actually on stage in front of a live audience did his own DIY gene hacking. Did you hear about that using CRISPR? Anyway, he's sort of one of these, let me try, let let me push this forward. But even him has come out and put a statement. I forgot. I don't know if it was in Forbes or what. And he said... This is verbatim. You know what? I kind of blame myself. Honestly, I see myself as a scientist, but also a social activist with some of the experiments I've done. Like, how can I do this experiment from a scientific way, but also make people think? Make people think or push CRISPR experiments further forward. (laughs) I don't know why. I don't know. Sorry. I'm making myself laugh. Is is this still verbatim? (laughs) Yes. Okay. Basically, he goes, what it's turned into now People view it as a way to get press and publicity and get famous. And people are going to get hurt. There's no doubt in my mind that somebody is going to get to going to end up hurt eventually. Everybody's trying to one up each other more and more. So he's this guy that's been on stage doing these gene hacking in front of a live audience. And he's worried because where does it stop? Do you know what I mean? And with this gene yeah. hacking, they're saying like 11 year olds and like teenagers can basically do their own gene modification from their what living room. What do you mean gene hacking? What's so, gene hacking? CRISPR, C-R-I-S-P-R, is a... Donut. It's like a gene tool. Um, well, actually, CRISPR is part of a bacteria, uh, E. coli bacteria. But anyway, it's very complicated. These genealogists, I don't know if that's their name, have found a way to be able to edit or modify your genes to eliminate viruses or introduce something. Genealogist? Uh, gene. You say so genealogist? 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 Oh, people who study genies. <laughs> Gynecologist? <laughs> I don't know what they're called, but basically the simple way to think about it, I think this is from one of the founders of this particular CRISPR Cas9, said that imagine a word, word document, text, right? And you want to... Um, cut in a specific place, um, delete a letter, add a letter, add a sentence, add a few, whatever. This, they can do that now with CRISPR. Okay. Which is basically a gene modification tool. Bloody hell. And it's extremely accurate. So um, they believe this is the way of the future. And Could it's it make ad- me taller? And you can actually order your own gene modification tool online, basically. Um, or that you're going to be able to. And, and they, they envisage that it's not just these high-level scientists that would be able to do this. It could be anyone. So if you wanted to modify your genes, you can. You could um, try and modify yourself to have a tail or you could try and cure so your cancer or whatever. It's very specific. So whatever you want to do, you can recode your DNA. Could basically. I be five foot ten and have like nice long, long hair? <laughs> but this is happening. So a, like they, This person won a Nobel Prize for this. Mm-hmm. The first I was going to say was when you modify, it, it, like I feel like gene modification is very specific in that if you modify the wrong thing, like you'll kill yourself because your gene just won't, int- it won't code properly. So it's, that's just dangerous from a standpoint of that. It is weird. I don't know how it fully works, but they say... Is there a control Z function? <laughs> <laughs> undo, undo, but then, undo. <laughs> then I was just thinking like, what you're saying is, I, is I made myself five foot ten and realized my pants don't fit no more. <laughs> <laughs> and Undo. by the way, what I said was from a very unscientific um, position. <laughs> okay. Nice. Sorry, science it's, community. It's a very poignant. It's a it's a poignant term, um, thing to to mention in the fact that like everything does trickle down, doesn't it? So when you think of, like technologies, 
everything starts at the people who can afford or the people who can create or whatever and then it becomes mainstream and everyone yes. now has access to it yeah so that's i guess that's a whole concern i hadn't even thought about in terms of like but not not when go on i was saying not everything that starts at the top trickles down there some people don't like when it's deemed too dumb or dangerous but then it will fade out won't it yeah it yeah will. like it's not so it just but anything, it's anything the top that's now, it doesn't mean it's definitely going to be yeah, the case no, for yeah. like you're us in the future. I wouldn't. You're I, right. I don't think so. De- definitely, I definitely agree with that. I just think in terms of if this is something that is something that conti- like if this is something that continues, it will trickle down eventually. Yeah. But then when you look at the idiots who make things like a vibrating body compass, <laughs> like what? Well, well apparently whoa, that, whoa, I don't, they don't. Who decided they were idiots? Who decided they were idiots? <laughs> Alex, me, when he's me. getting to his destination in America quicker than you, we'll see who the real idiot is. <laughs> <laughs> Alexander, Alexander's wandering around. Where the hell is North? <laughs> Where? Oh, I should have got that implant. I should have got like, that implant. <laughs> 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 um, Max, Max is walking around. Lost, Alex? <laughs> Lost, are you? <laughs> um, there's this guy, Ryan O'Shea. He's from Grindhouse Wetware which I guess is another biohacking place. And he reckons this, um, if, to make biohacking go further, they're going to start in, uh, creating long-lasting implantable batteries. So it's like an implantable battery that is like planted in you, strong enough to power electronics. Could you imagine that? You're like, oh, my phone is dying. Beep. Astro One boy. minute warning. Astro, Astro boy. boy. There's so, there's so many things that. I don't want. Yeah. <laughs> maybe yes. maybe what they could do instead of having it all inserted they could just you could just have pockets which are always in your legs and then you can just put power banks and stuff in there when you need them <laughs> do you know what I mean you could just have cargo cargo just have, legs <laughs> yeah cargo <laughs> legs you can have cargo legs pockets boy. on your legs you, can just Ernest, you, know, them up. you know the movie Alita they have like a they zipper body parts. the zips are like be made of hair or something you have to trim them down and again <laughs> when they grow too long but you have a, it's like a kangaroo a pouch made of hair. yeah what yeah, that say? You, know, <laughs> you can keep your young in there or you can keep an iPhone charger. It's you the can movie Alita, how yeah. they can change their body parts. Oh yeah. my gosh, they get the, that's funny. the arm to do a certain job and yeah. then they can change the arm and all that. Yeah, similar. Well, they have oh, thought about that. you, as, not you? Yeah, they've thought about that as the You're way You're already the future. not you. You're bacteria, right? <laughs> yeah, we are what, some ridiculous percentage bacteria. They have thought about <laughs> removing body parts and... Um, you know, have artificial limbs and stuff like that as the way of the future. But they realize like it's if why replace a perfectly good part of your body, right? That is going to need upgrading and then upgrading again. And that's why they're switching more to wearable technology. Um, and that's the way of the future. I think I like Elon's doing a lot of wearables and stuff like okay. that. To all of you now, biohack, what biohack would you do? If there was no like health implications or anything like that, you could just, Oh, that's good. I would like to have like a zoom in lens on my eyes. That'd be cool. That's cool. What would you want to zoom in oh. on? <laughs> <It's just> like... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so, Dev, your article next. My article is about a man that got swallowed and then spat out by a whale. Say what? Fair enough. He, what do you uh, mean? This I, is insane. The the whale. I don't how think much, the whale. How, yeah. How much did he get swallowed? Like, was, <laughs> did he just go into the mouth? I think. I think it was just in the mouth. You know when you ever have you ever like bit on something half and then sort of went, oh, that's not it, and then you spit it out. Have you ever done that? Like. <laughs> No. Do you know what I'm talking about? If I yeah. bite something, I'm usually going to try to eat it. Yeah, but no. like, <laughs> like if you get a piece of metal or... Why would I be biting metal? <laughs> what are you eating? What do you think I'm eating? <laughs> oh, this that, metal Emma, how's that court case going? Yummy. Did you get a lot of compensation for that metal? <laughs> yeah, why metal? You mean like tinfoil? I don't on know. What are you talking about? I don't know. Are, like, are you eating Kit yes, Kats with yeah, a yeah, maybe there's like tinfoil or... <laughs> I don't know. But I know so what you mean. When you cook... You cook a, you cook some brownies and the foil gets stuck to the bottom of it and you go, oh, nah. like, some tin foil on it. Have you had fish, like if you're, if it, there's bones in the fish still, 
and then you're oh, eating yeah. the fish and then like you 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 bite down but you realize straight away that there's a bone you're like oh and then the first you stop chewing and then you take the food out of your mouth and yeah. you take the bone out and then you put that piece of meat that you've half eaten back in your mouth <laughs> yeah this is the most <laughs> epic <laughs> bone in fish story i've ever heard <laughs> well so you're saying this guy was the bone yes oh no he was like something all right cartilage so like all right another one is like you think you're eating chicken right <laughs> and but then, you're not eating chicken right what, so, what are you eating no but like something like the, maybe there's a piece of octopus in there i don't know why why would you have octopus <laughs> in your listen, chicken listen what you, is your chicken you, you, go, you, you, go, you go to the restaurant siege right yeah and then in the buffet right yeah. i don't know whatever like the guy, the chef's cooking, and then he's mixed up his uh, like your order with someone else's order. So he's put some octopus in there. I'll be saying, and, thank God, I prefer octopus. Listen, <laughs> anyway, so you pick up you pick up your chicken, you eat it, and all of a sudden there's this rubber bit. You go, oh, oh, that's not it. So what happened here? The whale was going for some fish, and then picked up a diver, <laughs> and he bit down, and he said, oh, that's not fish, and he spat it out. That's what pretty much happened. I'm trying to find an analogy. So you can visualize what I'm, I'm trying to say. Okay, I can so see the picture, many, to be honest with you. I can, can you see what you're saying. Yeah, but the podcast people don't see the picture. Put the picture up. You have to put the picture up. You put the picture up. You put the no, picture up. A, I'm out of here. A, <laughs> even if you put the picture up, it's still a podcast. Most oh, yeah. people are listening, not watching. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. Okay. Okay. So don't just to elaborate. Detail, <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll just tell people if we put the picture up, but we won't do it. Because they're just listening. All right? Hey, and now here's the picture. <laughs> <laughs> so to elaborate, I this diver... I think if I was going to get eaten by anything, yeah. it would be a whale because at least they can spit you back out. Yes. Mm. And also, oh. do whale have teeth? Yes. Huh? Yes. And Maxi, it's not Pinocchio style. He didn't go in there, build a, like a campfire. He didn't go inside. It was sort of ah. just in the mouth. That's what I imagined first. But, but, he just sort of <laughs> he, he moved into like the whale. The top, like I live here. Yeah. Now. I don't this see any. Home. Home. I like, don't see any teeth in like this whale now. When you take a spoonful of soup and then there's just like a piece of hair and you. Just... Yes, oh. that's a better analogy. That is way better than mine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yours is like if you get squid with your chicken, you're like, thank you. That is way I, better. I prefer the squid than the chicken. <laughs> that is way better. Yeah. So if you got a hair in your soup, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sending it back because it ain't mine. Yeah, that's way better, Alex. Sex. <laughs> Do you reckon if he swallowed him a bit more, he could have blown him out through his blowhole? No, 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 no. no. He, he would have pooped him out later on that day. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to elaborate on this story. Okay, so the diver was there for a specific reason. He was videoing the sardine run. Okay, so the sardine run is where all the sardines are, and you get the whales, the sharks, the seals, everything trying to eat the sardines. So he was swimming at that time with the sardines and so happened to get eaten by the whale. But his um, partner, I guess, was there filming at the time and that's why it got caught on camera. But he was okay. very, very lucky. To be perfect, if, if, um, if I was getting eaten by a whale, my partner kept filming and not trying to get me out, I'd be pretty disappointed. Well, how are you going <laughs> to get the partner out? <laughs> like, what are you going to yeah, do to get him I, out? I, I at least expect, like, oh no, you're being I'll, eaten I'll, by a I'll whale. Siege. <laughs> or some kind of concern. No, oh, this is a great What's shot. <laughs> What's your strategy? So you, What's you your strategy? As well. I'll be if I was being eaten by the well, I'd be shitting myself. <laughs> poke him in the eye, isn't it? Poke him in the eyes, the go-to. That's the yeah. shark. How am I gonna poke him in the eye? Can't reach the whale's eyes. Can't reach the eyes. I'm in his mouth. How am I gonna get there? <laughs> hey guys, I'm trying to come up with solutions. Stop shutting me down. All right. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, uh, I like you, DK. My, my question is: though, You said this guy like there's a sardine run. Right, which means all the sardines come together like a massive, what do you call it, school of sardines? Yeah, and this is term? off the coast of sure. South Africa. School. Yeah. Sure. Anyway, uh, so there are a load of sardines, and you know that the whales and the dolphins and the sharks are coming to eat the sardines. Why would you swim with the sardines? <laughs> I don't know. He's very experienced. He's been doing it for like 25 years or something. Well, okay, I, he's very I didn't have to be experienced to know that ending up in a whale's mouth is a wrong thing to do. <laughs> yeah. God. Oh, I think... I'm no expert, but I think it went wrong somewhere. <laughs> and the rest of the crew was, was like was 25 nautical miles away. So no one would have been able to help if, if you know, it did go south even more. B besides the cameraman who were just filming. I just wish... Really this guy was wearing a GoPro because how amazing would it be to see the footage of actually going in the mouth? 
Mm. Not really that amazing because all you hear is cursing, like, oh shit, oh my god, <laughs> I'm going to die. I don't want to be pooped out by a whale. <laughs> what goes through your head at that time? Do you think we're ever going to realize that we're not like made for the water? Because things like this, and they talk about shark attacks and stuff, which aren't that common. But They're quite common here. They're not. Yes, we, they we, are. We sort of just feel like How we have dominion over a lot of things. And I feel like Every the water's one we constantly prove that we don't. That we're not meant for the water. Well, I think we also prove we're not meant for land by that logic. <laughs> 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 or speed, I guess. <laughs> Flying. Speed. Or the air. <laughs> Well, uh, or the environment. We're not there's not there's not much that naturally takes us out on land. Other than yeah. stairs, no, stairs we... take a lot of people out. <laughs> no, I get what you're saying though. Definitely, we are not the rulers of the oceans. Yeah, sure. I, know what you mean. I know what you mean. I don't know. Like, I like a good surfing surfing lesson, but I wouldn't go much further than sort of uh, fifty meters, hundred meters out. Like, then I feel uncomfortable. Mm. Can you tell me um, before we end this? How how did the did the guy have any bite mark? I don't know. No, he wasn't injured. <laughs> he wasn't injured. I don't know. Why are you asking me for them? <laughs> they just spat how him out. I know this. <laughs> Mister Lovely Whale spat him out and said, "Oops, sorry, you're not sardines. Go have a nice day." And he lives to tell the story. Okay, everyone, keep listening to the B-Side Word. Rate, review, leave comments, subscribe, like our Instagram page, like our Facebook page, tell your friends, share. Bye.